Due to the illness of Skylar Yancey, the role of Timothy Lawrence is temporarily being played by Nathan Owens. Carly, what's going on? What's wrong? Nothing, Franco, nothing. I, I, I don't want to talk about it. Well, Carly, you know you can tell me anything. You know, you, you trust me, Carly. You know you can. I know, Franco, but there's some news that... I don't know, it affects Michael, it affects it affects me, it affects a whole bunch of other people here in town. Well, Carly, you, you know, your pain is my pain, Carly. Just tell me anything and just let it out. I'm here. You got to trust me, Carly. You got to trust us. Uh, believe me, anything you tell me, it's going to stay between us. I'll take it to my grave. I swear to you. I believe you, Franco. I believe you. So... Tell me what it is. What's bothering you? Okay. This is what it is. It's about... Carly, I know you're in there. Open the door. What the hell is he doing here? Hold on just a second, okay? Hey, I know you're busy, Carly, but I need to talk to you for a second. Uh, not right now, Sonny. Sonny's not a good time right now. Can you can you tell? Can you leave just for a second, Frank? I need to talk to speak with Carly alone. It's alone. This is what are you talking about speaking alone? This is my room, Sonny. You can't just kick me out. Well, you need to leave your room. This is my room. You, you can't just kick me out. Who the hell do you think you are? This is not your room. You don't even pay rent here, so it's Carly's room. Guys, guys, just calm down. What the hell do you think you are? Just kind of telling me. Just listen, listen, Franco, listen. Give me just a couple minutes with Sonny, and, and, and I'll be done. Just, I promise I won't take long. Let me just hear what he has to say, okay, please? Are you sure you're going to be okay? You're going to be all right? I'm going to be fine, I promise you. Okay, all right, I, I, I hope so. you got to be kidding me. You two are still, you, Sonny, I'm going to the gym to work out. I'll, I'll, I'll see you in a bit. But if he hurts you, if he hurts you, if he says anything, you gotta let me know. Okay? It'll be fine. It'll be fine, I promise. Alright. Sonny, what is it? What is it? I, I just wanted to talk to you for a second, Carly. Uh, I know that... I need to know if you're gonna tell Michael that I shot AJ. I, I really need to know. Sonny, I haven't decided anything yet. My son is going going through hell because of you. I know that. And I'm going through hell too, Carly. It's just driving me crazy. I, I just need to know. Are, are you going to say anything to Michael about, about what I did? I don't know, Carly. I, I mean, Sonny, I don't know. I don't know. Carly, please tell me you didn't tell Franco anything. Are you going to tell him anything? I mean, are you going to tell Franco what happened? told him anything, Sonny. And, and, and I don't know. I'm not saying that I might not. I still may say something to him. I don't need you to say anything about it, Carly. It's got to stay between us. Please. Please. Don't say anything to Franco. Please. I'll think about it. I've got things to do right now. I'm going downstairs and i got stuff i got to do, Sonny. I, just, just show yourself out, okay? Okay. I, I think I'm going to stick around here and, and talk to Franco. You're not going to ask Franco about this, are you? No, no, no. There's something else. I, I got to talk to him about some business. What kind of business, Sonny, that you have with Franco? Nothing. Nothing. I'll, I'll, it's no big deal. I just need to ask him a question. Believe me, I'll, I'll be alright. I'll be alright. I'll be my best behavior, I promise. <sighs> okay. I don't know how long you think that you're going to be able to do this. Uh, and you know you're not going to be able to get away with this. Oh, on the contrary, Elizabeth. I know I'm going to be able to get away with this because I'm going to reunite my grandson with his mother. She's not the mother. The mother is Lulu. Oh, no. My Brita carriage, little baby Ben. I used to call him Baby Cesar, but I know that's not the case. 
but baby Ben was carried from my Brita for nine months, therefore she is the mother. She's not the mother. You're just twisted. Twisted? Oh, how twisted do you think I could be? You're not going to be able to get away with this. Somebody's going to find out. Somebody's going to find out that you have been. Nobody's going to find out, Elizabeth, because we are going to go far away where we don't have to worry about facing expedition. Therefore, me, my Britta, and my grandson will live happily ever after. You're delusional. You really are delusional. Do you know that? Well, delusional as it may be, it's just simply a matter of time before I get what I want for me and my Britta. You don't know what it's like about being a mother, do you? You have no conscience whatsoever, not a heart at all in the bones of yours. How dare you say that to me and speak like that in that tone? I do have a heart. I am very compassionate. You don't seem to understand. I never was really there for my Britta. All those wonderful years, lots of years gone by. I really want to be the mother, the mother to my Britta that she deserves. However, I never was there. I do feel, I do love this baby. I do love my daughter. So please don't tell me about compassion. Because I do feel compassion. I just want, all I want is just to be together again with my Britta. And be a family as one. This is all I ever want. And it will happen. It will definitely happen. I can't believe you. The only way it's going to happen is over Dante and Lulu's dead body. Well, that could be arranged very easily. <laughs> You're crazy. You're sick. Oh, on the contrary. I know exactly what I'm going to be doing. And I will make sure that everybody's satisfied. Except for Dante and Lulu. It's too bad. They can't have another baby. This baby's ours. So... <laughs> You're living in the fantasy world, Elizabeth, but that's okay. I promise I will take good care of Ben. You just, I just can't believe you. I really can't. Oh, hey, Doc. How you doing, man? Oh, how you doing? You're the, you're Sarge, huh? Yeah, one and only, one and only. So I take it you're going to be here just for a little while? Oh, just a couple days. Just a couple days. Uh, Dave's already been through this before, and, you know, he's he hasn't been gone to sleep that long. Just got to work on his legs. <laughs> I hope you can work on his mind. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm going to do the best I can for David on that. Um, I'll see what I can do on that front. So, David, uh, how are you doing today, my friend? How are you? Sarge. Frankie. Bo. I see. Oh, man. It's, uh... Do you know who I am, David? Do you know who this is? Dr. Kevin. Dr. Kevin Sarge. Bo. Ah, okay. Sarge. Bo. Ah, uh, yeah. Is he gonna be alright, man? Sarge. Bo. David, you, you okay, dude? I hope you're going to be all right now. He's going to be fine. Actually, this is quite common in folks that have been comatose or due to the trauma, <clears throat> the shock, the brain waves, the neural paths are not functioning properly. And usually what happens is at that point, medication, that can actually be a factor. And being asleep for such a long time, he's, he's a little bit confused, but... He is basically remembering people that he cares about a lot in his life, and usually that's what happens in these cases. It's temporary, temporary amnesia. He'll remember in due time. Shouldn't be too long. It's just, uh, just one of those things that we just got to kind of hurry, sit and wait, make sure everything's all right. So he's going to be all right, then. You, you sure about that? Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. It'll be cool. So, David, uh, um, is there anything I can do for you, get for you? Frankie. Frankie. I think he wants Frankie. Um, you want me to call Frankie for you, David? Is that what you need? Frankie. Frankie. Okay, I'm going to get on the phone right now and call Frankie. Um, let me get a hold of him. Hey, 
Frankie. This is Kevin Collins, man. What's going on? Oh, what's happening, man? You sound like you're driving pretty fast. Yeah, I'm on my way over to Serenity Springs right now. Uh, I was just gonna call you to see if you're uh, if you uh, if you could come over. Dave is looking for you. He wants to talk to you. I'll be there in just a bit. All right. All right, Sarge, he's on his way. David, he's on his way. He'll be here in just a second, all right? Frankie. Frankie. He's on his way, David. Just relax, all right? Hang on a second. He'll be here shortly. Huh. You're still here? Yeah, I'm here. I need to talk to you, Franco. Look, if you're just gonna go off on me again, and you're gonna just just, just start start talking, just I, I got don't have time for you right now, Sonny. I'm a busy man. I got a lot of things to do. Just take a second of your time. I just want to ask you a question. If you're not, just a simple question. Oh, what is it? What do you need? <clears throat> you wouldn't have anything to do with um, my warehouse on Pier Fifty Four um, being torched, would you? Do you have anything to do with that, Franco? Your warehouse. Are you kidding me right now? Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Do you know, or have you, do you, have you, were you responsible for my warehouse going up in smoke? Really? <laughs> I'm glad you see that this is amusing. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. You really, really think that I have to have something to do with blowing up your damn warehouse? <laughs> Oh, won't test me, Franco. <laughs> Look, that's the last thing that I would even think of doing. You think you're thinking of the old Franco? Now the old Franco might have gone ahead and do it, but do you think that I would do something like that today? Now, right now that I got half of my brain out of my skull? Well, you've done worse before, <laughs> but that was a while ago. You really think, Sonny, that I'm gonna go ahead and turn around and do that? Well, you got a psycho mother. Yeah, my psycho mother. Don't don't remind me about that. Well. Obviously, she couldn't do it. She has no motive, and you do. So, what do you got to say about that? Well, if you don't believe me, Frank, you don't believe me. Sonny, if you don't believe me, just go ahead and go ahead and talk to Carly. Ask her. She'll tell you everything. She'll let you know that I, wasn't, that I was with her. I was in the bedroom. In fact, we made wild, passionate love all night long. I don't want to hear the details. I'm just letting you know. Just telling you. Feel free to ask her. If you don't believe me, I was nowhere near your precious, precious warehouse last night. <laughs> All right. Well, just word of warning. If I find out that you had anything to do with that, <laughs> you're going to answer to me. You got it. Good day, Franco. Well, don't let the door hit you on the way up, pal. Oh, Jeez. Whoa. He needs to stop drinking caffeine. He's coffee importer. He needs to stay, make me decaf. It'll probably be a little better for him. Hey, what's up, Frank? What's going on, man? Hey, Sarge, how you doing, man? It's good seeing you, buddy. I'm all right, man. I'm all right. I'm all right. How's David doing? He's he's all right. I don't know. This is kind of now. He's not with it, if you know what I mean. You just might want to check with Doc over here. Yeah, Frank. He's he's not himself. He's just pretty much. Calling for people's names and that kind of thing. He's he's not himself, man. Man, David, are you alright, man? Are you gonna be okay? Frankie. Frankie. You see what I mean? That's exactly what we're dealing with right now, man. Oh man. Oh god, I know it's this bad. He's boy. Dave, I hope you're alright, dude. Frankie. Frankie. Shut the door. Oh, okay. No problem. Believe me, Frankie, that's... Wow, that's the most words he said in a couple days. Shut the door. Okay, David, the, the door is shut, man. And What's going on? Are you okay? Or is there something that you want to tell us? Frankie. Dr. Collins. Sarge, guys, listen to me. I know exactly what's going on. I'm in my right frame of mind. I am 100% okay. 
Oh my gosh, what the hell? Yeah, I'm fine, man. I'm telling you, listen to me. What? What's going on, man? Yeah, Dave, what, what, what's up, man? What's going on, man? Listen to me, guys. I'm totally okay. I'm totally good. It's, this is all, this whole thing's been a setup, man. I'm telling you, this whole thing has been a setup. Listen, I don't have a lot of time to talk to you guys. I'm glad you're here. This is why I called you here, Frank. And Sarge, I'm glad you're here. And this is what's going on. Okay. I got shot. Yes, I did. But let me tell you what happened. I was never in a coma. The doctors were in on it all along. Felix was in on it. <clears throat> Everybody was in on it already, man. I was not in a coma. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. You're saying you never were almost damn near dead? No, Frank, that's not what I'm saying, man. Listen to what I'm telling you. I did get shot, and I did flatline. Okay, this is true, and believe me, I thought I was goner, man. But look, when I came back, I was almost dead. But when I came back, something told me I needed to use this in a way to get myself here at Serenity Springs. Listen, hear me out, man. <clears throat> I got shot, but I don't know if Mitch is the one that did it. I'm thinking we have no suspects. I'm thinking maybe he's the one that did this to me, and if he did, why not go ahead and put myself undercover and make it look like I was damn near on death's row, make it look like I was in a coma, so I have a, um, an excuse that I can go ahead and come to Serenity Springs and try to recover here. That's what's happening. So, your legs are alright. Does that mean I gotta go home now, or what's happening? <laughs> Tell me, talk to me. No, Sarge. You're working, you're getting paid, I promise you. I'm fine, I'm okay, but you gotta act like nothing, <laughs> like I need some serious help. And the reason why is because I'm gonna need you here to go ahead and be my eyes and ears as well as, as Tim, your brother Frankie. Tim is also gonna be here for eyes and ears. And this, get this, even if Mitch didn't pull the trigger, there is reason for me to be here because something is going on. One of, now this definitely is not a, a, an insane asylum. This definitely is not uh, psychiatric ward. This is Serenity Springs. This is a nice place. Dude, I like it here, believe it or not. Well, let me tell you, these people that are running here are normal, that are here. They just have problems. But there have been some of the customers that have went to to Tim and said, dude, there's some weird people walking around here. A couple of weird people. I got to investigate. I don't know what's going on, but they say they've been seeing these people over and over again. So if Mitch didn't shoot me, or if his son didn't shoot me, my brother, which I doubt, then there's another reason that I'm here. So I'm here investigating this particular place. And I know, Frank, you want to shut this place down, I'm sure. You're damn right. Mitch gets out of line, man. I'm just glad that you're okay. My boy's okay, man. But, man, I'm mad at you, man. I can't believe that you put me through that. Make me think that you in a coma. And, man, I can't believe you did that, man. I'm pissed off at you right now. I can't believe you did that to me. I know, Frank. I'm sorry, dude. I'm really sorry about that, man. But I had to do it. So I'm undercover. I am basically here, like I told you, to keep an eye on things here at Serenity Springs. But Sarge, you're involved because you know me. You're a good friend of mine. And we need to have somebody that gives me physical rehabilitation. Therefore, that's why I called you in. Okay? Now, Frankie, you're here because you were at the scene. You saw me get shot. All right? That's why I'm telling you this stuff. Okay? Because you already know. All right? And as far as Dr. Collins, I need you to do these uh, medical evalu or mental evaluations of me, if you will, and continue to visit. And if you guys, when you come and see me each and every time for the next week or two, please, if you see anything weird, let me know. But in the meantime, I'm going to stick it out here for a couple weeks. I'm going to investigate. And if I find something that's up with Mitch Lawrence, believe me, he's going down. But then again, if I don't find anything, I wasted my time. But nonetheless... I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to to check it out since I honestly thought when I woke up that Mitch Lawrence was the one that pulled the trigger. And I, I don't know if he did or not, but that's why I'm here. I got to say, David, this <laughs> man, that is it's a very very ingenious plan, man. That's that's amazing. I I can't believe it. You you totally had me snowed. <laughs> yeah, man, you had me snowed too, brother. Woo, boy, I tell you, that's something. I cannot believe that you you get you pull that off and pull the wool over everybody's eyes. I know, but you guys got to promise me. You have to promise me that you say nothing to nobody. You don't let anything slip. 
You don't let anybody know my plan. I'm here at Serenity Springs. I have to conduct this business accordingly. The only other person that knows about this is your brother, Frank Tim, and I know I can trust him. Okay, so you have to keep this under wraps. I'm going to be checking out the massage area. I'm going to be checking out the, uh, uh, the all the different counseling rooms. I'm going to check out Mitch's office. I'm going to check out um, my brother's office, Zeke. I'm going to be checking everything, man, and I'm telling you, if I find any evidence that he shot me, that son of a bitch shot me, he's going down. But if I find something else, in the meantime, even if he didn't shoot me, guess what? He's going down too. So this might be my one chance to finally bring Mick, Mick Lawrence down, and I'm, I don't really want to lose it. <sighs> well, man, I don't know. Like I said, you really pissed me off, man, about that. But you had to do what you had to do, man. I, I guess I'm just relieved that you're all right, man. I'm glad you're okay. My boy's all right. I just want to make sure, man, you, you sure you know what you're doing, right? I mean, I know you do, man. I got to tell you, I know the ineffective detective jokes I used to make. I'm sorry because you a genius, man. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. I appreciate it, man. Look, look, I just want to make sure that what I'm doing is uh, it's going to be worth it. I want to make sure that everything's going to be all right. So uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, I, you'll be in touch. We'll be texting. We'll be calling each other. I'm going to be staying here. And, of course, I'm, I'm only going to know a couple names. Doc, Charlie, Bo. And Frankie and Sarge. And that's it. So, guys, take it easy. I'll talk to y'all a little bit. All right. All right, Dave. Take it easy, man. I'll call you. I'll call you, man. We'll talk on the phone. Uh, you ain't gonna be needing me for the rest of the day. I'll just come back in the morning and work on them legs. <laughs> yeah, I'll come back in the morning too to check on you. And uh, <laughs> I can't believe that you roped me into this, Dave. <laughs> Franco rolled me into one thing. My wife Lucy rolls me into something. Got caper. Now you're rolling me into this. <sighs> Can I ever just have a normal day in Port Charles? <laughs> Take care, Dave. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, Paulie. I appreciate the phone call. Yeah. More than you know. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I'm just fumbling through paperwork here in the office. So it's been done? It's been done. Magnificent. All right, Paulie, you have a good day. We'll talk soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sonny Corinthos. You were a friend one, at one time. You got too soft, too sloppy. Too many people have died. Too much blood has been on your hands. It was time for me to just send you a little message. One that I hope you'll never forget. <laughs> Good day, my friend, and I'll be seeing you in Port Charles very soon. <laughs>